We will go on now with looking at the specific structure of the Chinese tourism industry and success with the Chinese business partners. Let's start looking at China. What I'm going to cover in this session is the structure of the Chinese tourism industry. And then I will give you some practical information, tips actually, about how to successfully address your Chinese partners. CNTA, the Chinese National Tourism Administration, our National Tourism Authority, in charge of basically almost everything related to tourism. They're looking at the inbound, domestic, and also outbound travel in China. CNTA especially works together with the local authorities to partner with the foreign national tourism offices to carry out marketing events and also promotion. For example, what we have today is the 2018 EU-China Tourism Year preparation. So that is a major responsibility of the CNTA. They're also responsible for issuing licenses to outbound travel agencies and also deal with any complaints. They can actually take the licenses back. In China, the tourism industry is basically dominated by state-owned tourism operators. Everybody who has had any experience dealing with China is probably quite confused about CITS, CTS and others, as the brands are pretty much identical. Actually, last year, the two biggest Chinese travel groups HKCTS and CITS merged and became the largest state-owned travel group. Early on, in the beginning stage of outbound tourism, the Chinese tour operators actually started having a price war and competing more for market share than caring about profit, which led to a race to the bottom and the so-called zero-dollar tours. Various Chinese tour operators sold package tours at very low prices, but then, while on such a tour, they forced the participants to go shopping and then shopping commissions were paid back to the tour operator as a subsidy. The tour guides were not paid also, but had to earn their income from the commissions as well. This damaged the destination's image in the long run and led to a low level of Chinese tourist satisfaction. This is why, since October 2013, the new Chinese tourism law made zero-dollar tours and forced shopping illegal. As you can see on the next slide, Travel agents are gaining more popularity, not just the technology-based ones, but also its competitors, the tour operators in China as well. Around 10% of the Chinese travel agents have an outbound travel license. These are issued by CNTA. Non-Chinese companies are not allowed to sell outbound tours. As I mentioned before, the competition in China among tour operators led to a very negative media reports about all these dealings with zero dollar tourists and about how the Chinese tourists were bullied actually by tour guides and tour leaders and were forced to go shopping. The unpopularity of group tours helped to push more tourists into considering travelling as FITs instead and it also helped the OTAs, the online travel agencies, to gain more market share as well. Along with the advancement of internet and mobile technology, currently we see 20% of the market penetration by the Chinese OTAs. But in the meantime, what we observe is that the Chinese retail travel agents, those with physical retail offices in China, still have the bigger market share. The reason for this is the fact that for Chinese tourists to be able to travel overseas, they still need to actually obtain a visa for most destinations and also to buy international tickets. Furthermore, while they are traveling overseas, one of the biggest issues is still the language barriers. Therefore, the traditional travel agent still have quite a strong bond with the Chinese travelers. Chinese OTAs, as we can see, are much more colourful here. Sea Trip is by far the biggest one, with more than one third of the market share. Sea Trip and Tunyu, with the cute ox head logo, are the two market leaders. They have the largest number of outbound offers, especially for the holiday bookings. On the left side, since the Chinese like animal logos, there is a cute flying pig. This is the latest player to join the market, Fliggy which has actually been rebranded from the former Alitrip. Alitrip is part of Alibaba, the biggest online retailer in China. So now it is called Fliggy, and this company is more focused on the younger traveler, up to the age of 30. We can also see on this side that there are also many other Chinese online travel agencies and other online portals. For example, Mafungu, the one with the yellow background, is actually concentrating on user-generated content, where Chinese post their travel blogs and pictures and share their experiences. For anyone who is interested in China, you need to know a bit more about that part as well.